Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you using modifiers in Reaper. Now, our modifier keys are these keys on the keyboard on the left side and the right side that we hold down to perform different functions than the default. This gives us a lot more options when we're moving things around or changing or adjusting things in our project. Now, overall, there are similarities when we use the same modifier for different reasons. For instance, when you hold down Shift, it tends to bypass something. Or if you hold down Control on the PC or Command on the Mac, we're usually copying something. Or if you hold down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, we tend to be deleting or deactivating something. But that's not always the case, as we'll see. But it's a good idea to understand that so you could try it out in new situations. So let's start off with something simple. We have a media item in front of us and it happens to be audio, but it could be MIDI, it could be video. So if we drag it around with no modifier, we can just put it in different places. If we turn on our snapping, it's gonna snap to the nearest grid. So right here, snaps to this one or this one. But if we hold down shift while we do it, it's gonna ignore that snapping. Hold down shift, and it's not gonna to snap to the nearest grid. So we're bypassing or ignoring the snap. If we hold down control on the PC or command on the Mac, we can copy it. Let's make it smaller, hold on the modifier and drag it to here, drag another one, another one. So we could use that for copying our items. Now, if we hold down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, we could adjust the audio that's inside the item. Hold down the modifier, and the audio inside gets moved, while the item itself stays in place. Now, we can combine our modifiers to do two things at once. Let's delete these three. And now, if I copy this one over to here, it's still going to snap to the nearest grid. But if I add shift to it, so now on the PC, holding down control shift, on the Mac, holding down command shift, I can copy it and ignore the snapping at the same time. See how it doesn't snap? But if I let go of shift, while I'm still holding it, I can then snap, while I'm still copying it. Hit shift again, and I'm not snapping. And where that comes in handy is that we could leave on snapping all the time. Instead of turning it on and off when we don't need it, just leave it on and hold down shift when you want to ignore the snapping. Hold down shift, move it around, it doesn't snap. Let go of shift, and it does snap. Now we can do similar things just by clicking. Let's make more copies. Let's make three of them. Now, if we click inside an item, it's going to select it and it's going to move the edit cursor here or here. Let's turn off snapping. So everywhere we click, when we select it, it not only selects the item, but it moves the cursor. If we want to avoid that, just hit Control on the PC or Command on the Mac, and then it'll select it, but it doesn't move the cursor. And by selecting it this way, it's going to toggle. So if I select it again, it unselects it or selects it, which is really useful for selecting things out of order. So if I hold down Shift and select things, it's going to select things that are next to each other. So if I choose over here, it selects all three. But if I just want to select the first and the third, hold down Control on the PC or Command on the Mac, and select this one and this one, and we could ignore this one. So it could select things not in order. And again, it toggles. Unselect it, select it, unselect it. Now I should also mention, if we go to the edge over here, we could change the length from the beginning or from the end, 
just by dragging. But if we turn snapping back on, it's going to snap to the grid. But again, we can hit shift to ignore that on both sides. It's not snapping. Let go of shift, and it snaps. Now, if we hold down alt on the PC or option on the Mac, we can stretch the audio. So I could bring this in to here or here, but notice it's still snapping to the grid. Again, if we don't want that behavior, add shift to it. So it's alt shift on the PC or option shift on the Mac. And then we can stretch it without it snapping to the grid. So again, we're combining two different modifiers. Let's take a look at the track effects, which are right over here. Let's open this one up. And we can see I have an EQ, a compressor, and a gate on this track. If I want to copy these effects to another track, let's make another track. I could drag from here and just drop it. And now I copied all those effects to this track. So they're still here. And they're also down here. Now, if I want to delete the effects that are on the track, hold on Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac and click the button, and now they're cleared. Again, this is deleting or deactivating using Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac. Now, if we want to move the effects from this track to this one, hold on Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, and then drag it to this one. Now the effects are only here. All the same effects, but they're no longer here. This one's empty. We can move them back the same way. Alt on the PC, option on the Mac, drag them back over, and now they're over here. And this one is empty. And we can do the same thing by taking our track effects and putting them on the items. So I could drag this over to here and drop it. And now the effects are on the item as well. They're in both places. So we could delete them from here, Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac. And now they're just here. Or we can move them back to the track, Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, and drag them over. And now they're over here. And we can also delete them from our items. Let's move them back to here. Alt on the PC, option on the Mac, and they're gone. Let's put them back. And we can also move them one by one. If I drag the EQ back to the track, it's going to duplicate it. So the track has the EQ, and the item has all three. But again, if we want to move them, let's delete it here. Hold on Alt on the PC, option on the Mac, drag it over. Now the EQ is on the track, and the compressor and the gate are on the item. And we can do the same thing for other tracks. We could duplicate the gate over to here just by dragging it. Drag it over here. Now this track has a gate, but we still have the gate over here. Or we could delete this, hold on Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, drag it over, and we move the gate to this track and it's no longer on this item. So we have the EQ over here, the compressor on the item, and the gate on this track. And we can do the same thing on the mixer. Here's our two tracks with their effects over here. And we can do all the same things with these buttons over here. Just drag this to here. Now all three effects are now on this track. Or we could delete them all, Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, and they'll go away. And we could also drag them one at a time to copy them, or we could delete them, Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, one at a time, or we can move them, Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, one by one. So we move them that way. We can move them all back the same way over here and all three are back on the first track. And in the mixer, 
we could also use Shift to bypass our plugins. One at a time, let's go to the EQ, hold on Shift, and that EQ is now bypassed. The compressor and the gate, and we can unbypass them the same way. And they're back on. So again, Shift is being used to bypass. So let's close all this, and let's go back and look at our track control panel. All the stuff over here, right here we have a fader. So if we move it up and down, it's gonna change the volume of our track. We could double click it to go back to zero, but we can also use modifiers to change the behavior. If we hold down control on the PC or command on the Mac, we can move it with a fine adjustment. So if I move it now, it moves very slowly, or higher or lower. Double click it to bring it back. If we hold down Alt on the PC, or Option on the Mac, we could use a preview mode. So if we move the fader to a different level to hear how it sounds, if we don't like it, we could just let go, hold down the modifier, and it jumps back to the previous level, which is very useful if you want to try out a different level, but you don't want to commit to it. So let's say we're starting about here, hold on Alt on the PC, or Option on the Mac, try at a different level, if you don't like it, just let go, and it bounces back. And you can change your mind in the middle. So if you don't grab the modifier, and you play around with it, and you kind of regret it, just hold it down before you let go. Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, and then let go, it still jumps back. And you can do it the opposite way. If you want to commit to it, after you held it down, just let go of the modifier before you let go, and then when you let go, it stays at that level. Now we could also use the modifiers to control grouping. Let's pretend we created a group or even a temporary group in Reaper. We could select by holding down Shift, both of these tracks, and if I grab my fader, they move together. Or the mute, or the solo, or bypassing our effects, they both bypass together. So we created a temporary group while they're selected. And we did it with Shift, but we could also do it by holding that Control on the PC or Command on the Mac and just selecting one track at a time. And again, they toggle, on or off. So now they're grouped or temporarily grouped, so they behave as a group. But we could bypass that behavior by holding down Shift. So if I want to move this fader, but I don't want to move this fader as well, I don't want to deselect my temporary group. I can hold down Shift, move the fader, and it moves completely separately. The same with the mute, the same with the solo, or bypassing the effect. And the same with panning. But again, the modifiers work together. So I can hold down Shift, double click it, just this one pops back up. And if I add them together, like holding down Shift, and Alt on the PC, and Option on the Mac, I can get that preview mode, but just for this track. Let go, and it bounces back. So it's ignoring the group, and it's also using the preview mode. And we can do the same thing by holding the Control on the PC, or Command on the Mac. To get that fine tuning, hold down Shift Control, or Shift Command, I get that fine tuning on this track, but only affects this track, because I'm also holding down Shift. So it's ignoring the group. And again, it works the same way for holding down Mute, hit Shift, and it bypasses the group. And this will work the same way if we create a real group. Let's select them both, hit Shift G to create a group. And now they behave the same way, even when they're not selected. The fader, the mute, the solo, the pan. But I can hold down shift to bypass that grouping. So the faders work independent of each other. And mute, and solo, and bypass effect, and pan. So it works for temporary groups and real groups. Let's ungroup that. Now we could also use modifiers directly for mutes and solos. 
Let's make these tracks smaller. Let's say another track. And let's say these two tracks are muted. We want to quickly unmute all the tracks in our project. On PC, we can hold down Control. On Mac, hold down Command and just click the mute. And all the tracks on our project become unmuted. Let's do it again. Let's mute this one and this one. Control on the PC, Command on the Mac, unmute it. And all the tracks on our project become unmuted. Even if we select one that's already unmuted, like this one, like mute these two, and do it over here, they all become unmuted. So it's a quick way of unmuting all your tracks. We can also hold an Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac and click one, and it mutes all the tracks in the project except the one you clicked on. Do the same over here or over here. So it mutes all the tracks except for the one you just chose. Again, we could turn it off by holding Control on the PC or Command on the Mac to unmute them all. And we could also exclusively mute just the one track. Hold on Alt and Control on the PC or Option and Command on the Mac and choose one and just that track gets muted. Do it to this one or this one. That's called exclusive mute. And we could do a lot of the same things with the solo button. If we solo this one, it just solos that track. But if we hold control on the PC or command on the Mac, it's going to unsolo all the tracks in the project. Just like that. Let's solo these two. And we could even click this one and get the same thing. It unsolos all the tracks in one click. And we could also hold down Alt and Control on the PC or Option and Command on the Mac, and it's going to solo just that track. So if this track is soloed, we could do it over here. Now that track is soloed, or this one. So it unsolos whatever's already going on and just solos what we just chose. It's very helpful. So that's pretty much it. There's certainly a lot more to go through and more uses for our modifiers, but I think you get the idea of how they can be used, how they can be combined, and how we can make use of them to work quicker and faster in Reaper. So I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.